Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. This episode is a bit of an extract out of my Angle Madness build that I'm currently in the process of doing. Now this is the bottom tier of Angle Madness. It turns out it's three drawer tiers that are stacked up to create a diamond shaped cabinet with all these crazy angles, hence the name. But of course you know that because you're following that build, right? No, why? So at this point of the build, I need to build the drawer webbing on the inside of these boxes. But in order to put the webbing there in the correct location, which is to have the runners and the kickers on the top, I really need to have the drawer boxes built first because then I can put the box in there, simply slide the runners and kickers in place and glue them in, and I'm done. As opposed to doing it the other way where I kind of place them arbitrarily and then I have to match a drawer exactly to those positions. It's a lot easier this way and you can correct for a lot of things that we'll talk about when we get to those episodes of Angle Madness. Now in looking at this box, one of the things that you can see is there are a number of angles in play. There's some sides that are sloped and then of course this interior is sloped. So we do have this angle here for the opening, but then something that you probably weren't able to see very easily with the drawer in place and looking at it from the front is that the front itself is inclined. So there's an inclination to this and we can show that a little bit better with putting a square next to it. It's subtle, but it's there. If you were to build a box and just apply this drawer front to the front of it and glue it into place and you had this much of an error, of course, it would just be a disaster in the front. So what I need to do is I need to make a dovetailed box on the inside here that has sloped outsides, the front is sloped towards the front, and the back is straight vertical. So if we count all those compound angles, we have two mirror compound angles in the front and two different mirror image compound angles in the back for a total of four that we got to go through and cut for each of the three boxes that make up one unit of angle madness. I say one unit because I'm silly enough to be building two. So what we're going to do in this episode is we're going to talk about how do you cut compound angle dovetails. So these are some joints I was playing with the uh, last couple days or so. This is a regular square dovetail, so vertical sides just like we normally would do. This board here has the tailboard inclined. So you can see the tailboard is on an angle, but the pinboard is vertical. This one here is the opposite. It has the pinboard at an inclination, whereas the tailboard is vertical. And this last one is a compound angle. So both sides are inclined on this one here. Now to prove that these aren't very difficult, these were all first cuts. So I just drew them all out, went through the procedure that I'd worked out in my head, and basically they pushed together. Now I did do a little bit of pairing so that they look a little nicer for this video, but for the most part they were just pushed together and there were no corrections beyond that. So the procedure is the same all the way through all four of these. Now in this video what I plan on doing is because we're all very familiar with this 90 degree one is I'm going to show you the procedure on the 90 degree angles. So this is going to be something very easy. You know what all the answers are ahead of time. And then we're going to repeat the procedure on the tail inclined board then on the pin inclined, and then on the compound one. And I fully expect that when we do these last two, you're going to be bored to tears because it's the same procedure through all four, yet you can do it with any set of angles. And I do want to stress that though these look like they're the same angles, these can be different angles, and the procedure works. Because in fact, these are different angles. And the procedure has nothing special about a 90 degree case. Now, of course, these are all going to be hand-cut dovetails, so go right ahead and grab a dovetail bit and chuck it up inside your brace. So earlier today, I resawed some basswood to 3 8 inch thick. This is straight off the bandsaw, so there hasn't been any cleanup at all. Uh, on this edge here, I did actually take a jigsaw and I roughed it all up so that it's nice and curvy. Now, the reason I did that is because when we look at a square end of a board, we kind of can picture the joint that's supposed to be there. So I want to sort of take that away because on each one of these I want us to figure out what the projection is of the two boards onto each other to decide how the cut is going to be made. Now in some of the cases it's really really easy like the square cut that we're going to start on first, the square joint that you see in almost every dovetail box out there. But as we move through the others that are compound angles where we incline either the tail, the pin, or both boards, uh, then the projection becomes a little bit different for each one of those boards and I want to be able to discuss that. Now one of the things I want you to notice in all of these joints is that if I hold the boards up in their orientation as they will be when they're assembled, all I do is I push the pin board straight into the tail board to assemble this joint. So the square joint went in together like that. Now if I take this one here with an inclined tail board and I hold it at the incline, I just push this pin board directly into it to form the joint. So even though there's an angle in here, I'm not 
taking the board and wiggling it in from an upper angle or wiggling this from the side, everything is assembled flat on the surface. Now this one here that has an inclined pin board, if I hold it at the correct inclination and I push it in, the joint assembles. And lastly, this one here at the compound angle, where both boards have an inclination, just aim them, push the pin board in, and you've got the joint assembled. So this is uh, something that we're going to use throughout this procedure for doing these joints. So getting back to our square joint. Now, normally when I do square joints like this for a regular dovetail box, I usually prefer to do things pins first. It's just how I learned so I can visualize the layout a bit easier. But in the case of these joints here where there's compound angles, I find that it's actually easier to do tails first. So we're going to do the square joint tails first so you can see what the procedure is that we carry through all of these joints. Now to do this joint, we're going to take this stock, I've already labeled it for tails and for pins, and we're going to hold it in the orientation that we want for the final joint. So this being just a regular 90 degree corner with the sides vertical, we're just going to hold it like that. Now what we're trying to do is we're trying to cast a projection of this board onto the other board in its correct orientation to know where to do the cut. In this case here, that's a really simple thing to do. We know it's just a 90 degree line right here on the board. And then the same thing will happen, this board projected onto this one. There's nothing too special there. We'll find that there are some differences with that when we get to some of the other boards. So just keep in mind that you're projecting one board onto the other. Now I went ahead and cut these boards according to their projections on each other, and then I applied some white veneer tape onto the surface so that when I draw the tails or the pins, you're going to be able to see what it is I'll be working on. And also I placed some blue tape here on the end grain so that when I transfer the tails to the pins with the knife, uh, we'll all be able to see it. So, so hard to see in that end grain. Now for doing this, we always just lay out the tails. One of the other reasons I put this veneer tape on is I want you to think about this layout as me drawing what the tails are going to look like exactly on the surface of this board. What I draw on this white veneer tape has nothing to do with where the actual cuts are going to go back into this board. So it's only the projection of it onto the surface of this board. So let me lay those out. Now one of the assumptions that people make when they're doing dovetails, which we need to actually think about here, is that typically you're going to now put this into the vise, and then you're going to take the saw and you're going to put it down here to make your cuts. The assumption that you're making is that the saw is going to go directly back square to the board. It's not going to be cutting on an angle side to side, it's going to go square. But that's not going to be the case in all these types of joints. So let's figure out where these cut lines actually are. Now we said before that all of these joints assemble by holding them in the correct orientation and pushing the pin board in. That means that in all of these joints, you would see the edge of the pins being horizontal to the surface, to the work surface. So if they're horizontal, then that means the sides of the sockets here on the tailboard are going to also be horizontal. It doesn't matter if this board is vertical like this or if it's at an incline, whatever. They're always going to remain horizontal. So that's going to be key as we go throughout this. So even as we switch back to this one with the compound angle where they're both inclined, take a look and see. You can see that the pin lines, the cuts, are all horizontal to the surface, even though both of these boards are inclined. So knowing that, we can pretty much draw this in horizontal. It's an easy case in this case, just use a saddle square. So these are going to be our cut lines for the tails. So let me go ahead and cut out the tails so we can transfer them to the pin board. So now we have the tail board cut. What we're going to do is we hold this in the correct orientation, like we want the joint to go together, put this here, and now I'm going to use a marking knife to basically scribe on the blue tape that's on the end grain to mark exactly where the pins are going to go. And again, this is just the surface where the pins are going to appear on the surface of this board. It says nothing about where the cut lines go back when we do the pins. So let me go ahead and do that in the vise. So now we have an exact representation of where these pins are going to be located. We need to determine where the cut lines are to actually fully define these pins. Now again, they're going to be horizontal to the surface. So in this case here, it's a pretty easy case. We'll just put a saddle square on here and mark the lines back. Now at this point, we have all the pins fully defined. So let me go ahead and cut these out. So with that, we can tap that in and we've got our joint. 
So the next joint has the tailboard inclined. So here we have this tailboard that's on an inclination while the pin board is still vertical. Now I'm going to use this bevel gauge over here to set the incline of the tailboard. So with our sample stock, tail and pin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold the boards in the orientation that I need them for in order to do a projection. So if I lean this tailboard on here and I place the pin board up, effectively what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to project where this board is located onto that other board. In a sense, if you took a pencil, you should be able to run it up the side of this board, you know, as it's held here, just run it up the side, and whatever line it draws on that other board is the projection of it. Now, it turns out that when you have only one bevel gauge involved, so whether it's the pin or the tailboard inclined, you can pretty much just take this off and just put the bevel gauge right on there and draw it. And that's exactly what you were thinking, and that was correct. So that's how we're going to draw this projection. So let me draw this on here. So this is the line you'd get if you held this board up on its projection and you drew the line for it. So this is where I need to cut the board. Now the other way, when I hold this board up in the same orientation, this board's going to project as just a simple straight line. The obvious case. So let me go cut these boards. So now with the board's cut, I can hold it up in the exact same orientation, and now we're going to draw the tails on there. Now there's nothing different about drawing tails when the tailboard is inclined other than you might want to take the choice of making the tails a little bit larger than the tails would be on a vertical board, simply because from the perspective they're going to end up looking a little bit smaller. So let me draw that in. So these will be our tails. Now we still haven't decided how to make the cut to go back. So if we take a look at this and I put this back in its orientation, remember that the edges of the pins are always going to be horizontal to the surface the pin lines that are on the tailboard are going to be horizontal as well. So they're going to go back, actually, at an incline. So if I were to hold this board still and then stand it up vertically, you can see that there's an angle to that. Basically, it's this bevel gauge. So that would be the angle for going back. So let me draw these horizontal lines in. So now the tail line's fully drawn, I can cut the tails out and then we can transfer them over to determine where the pins are located. Let me cut these out. So now with the tailboard cut, I can place the pin board up here in the exact orientation that it's going to be in when this is assembled. And now I could use the marking knife and I can strike lines in that tape so I know exactly where the pins are going to be exposed on this upper surface. We still don't know anything about the side cuts. So let me go ahead and transfer that. Now with the pin locations marked, we can just figure out where the pin edges are. As we already discussed, those are going to be horizontal to the surface, so they're just going to go straight back. Now, this edge here, this mitered edge, we couldn't put a saddle square on it because then they would be perpendicular to this edge. It turns out that because this joint has only one bevel gauge involved, and we were able to directly draw this line with the bevel gauge, it turns out that we can just rotate this to get that horizontal line. So it becomes the complement of the angle, whatever. Just rotate it till it looks horizontal and you're good to go. Let me draw these in. Now with the pin cut lines drawn, I can cut out the pins. So let me do that. And there's our joint. Now we can verify that we've got the right angle here. Looks pretty perfect to me. Now one of the things that you'll note is that I actually centered this tailboard onto the pin board. Part of the reason is, as this board, of course, tilts down, it becomes shorter in height. So, you know, that's why there's extra pin material up here, even though there would have been some down here. So what I did is I scooted up the tailboard so that this could sit flat. And you can do that by eye. Normally, when you'd be building a joint like this, you would use this bevel setting that you're using for the tailboard to actually rip cut this so that these are horizontal. Then you'll assemble everything and everything will sit nice and flat. So our next joint is one with the pin board inclined. So here we have the pin board inclined while the tail board remains vertical. So I'm going to go ahead and use the brass bevel gauge, that angle, because it's fairly pronounced, so it'll be easy to see. So with my pin and tail board, what I'm going to do is hold this joint up in the orientation it's going to be in when it's assembled. So we'll incline this pin board and then I'll set the tailboard up right here. Now, again, we're going to be doing projections. So I'm going to project this tailboard onto the pin board. Well, since this is vertical, it's pretty easy to see that that's just going to be a crosscut right here 
on the pin board. Now when I swap these around so that we can project the pin board onto the tail board, you know, again, we're going to imagine that I take a pencil and I run it right up along the side of this pin board to see where it would draw on the tail board. Now, because there's only one bevel gauge involved, it turns out this is a really easy case. I can just take the bevel gauge and put it right up onto this tail board and draw it. So let me do that, cross cut these, and I'll be right back. So now with the board cut, I can just orient these the correct way and I can draw the tails on this tail board the way we want them to look. Now, one of the things that's sort of a catch when you're looking at a board that's inclined like this on this edge is you don't want to draw the tails square to that edge. It would look weird if they suddenly dip down. So as you can see from this sample board I did before, they actually just come straight off the end of the board. So it does look a little bit funny when you're drawing it out, but once you cut it and assemble it, it looks perfect. So let me draw these in place. So now when we look at this joint assembled, we see that to get the lines horizontal, the cuts horizontal on here, it's basically going to be square to the surface. So this is again an easy case. So let me draw that in. So with the cut lines defined, I can cut out the tails. So let me go ahead and do that. So with the tail board cut, we can just hold the joint together the way it'll be assembled. I'll take the marking knife and I'm going to cut the tape exactly where the pins are going to be located. So this is, you've heard this a hundred times now. So now that we know what the pins are going to look like on the surface of this, we have to decide where the cut lines go to the back. Now again, they're going to be horizontal to this plane down here. So it turns out that they're going to be just straight back. In this case here, because this edge is just vertical, we can just use a saddle square to mark the lines back. So let me go ahead and do that. Now with the pin cut lines marked, I can cut the pins out, we can assemble this joint. So there we've got our joint assembled. Now we can test this out and see how we did. Woohoo, looking pretty good. And that's good that we built our confidence up because the hard one is next. So the next joint is the ultimate one that we're trying to get. This is the one where we have both the pin board and the tail board inclined. So we can see that the tail board here is on an inclination and that the pin board is on an inclination as well. So this is the compound angle actually that would show in the front of my angle madness project. This would be the side, the angled side, and then this would be that angled drawer front that we have to have. Now I've set my two bevel gauges actually to the angles of my front drawer opening there. So this is the angle that is sort of the complement of that drawer opening. So this is where the tailboard would lean for the drawer to be properly oriented. And then this is going to be how the front of the drawer leans towards the front. Now it's pretty subtle, but it's there. So that's where the drawer is going to lean towards the front. This is where the drawer front is going to be applied. So now holding these in the correct orientation, I'm going to use something to help me on the inside here. Now the first thing that we want to do is we want to project, like we've been discussing, the tail board onto the pin board to know that angle. All the other times I was able to cheat by simply taking that one bevel gauge and just moving it because the other board was vertical. Here it's not vertical. It's inclined. Now because this board is inclined, the angle that we would draw on there, that projection, is neither this bevel gauge's angle nor this bevel gauge's angle. It's kind of a combination of the two. It's a function of the two. So we can't just take this gauge and move it over there and strike the line. We would actually have to do this projection where I take the pencil. So now with that little block that I had in there, basically the bases are being held at 90 degrees and it's helping keep these things from skidding all over the place. So I'm going to take this pencil now and I'm just going to run it along the edge of this board. So I'm actually leaning it right on the board, right onto the surface, and I'm going to strike a line on that other board. Now I don't need to strike a really dark long line. I can strike a couple points and then make a straight line with a straight edge. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now I have a line on there that you won't be able to see. So let me use this other bevel gauge to basically take this angle that's on this board that we just projected. That would be the angle that I just finished drawing. Now if we go to compare that to these two angles, you're going to find that while it's close to this angle. If I put a little bit of blue tape here on this board, you're going to be able to see that blue between the two bevel gauges. So it's a small discrepancy, but also that other board was leaning over just a little bit. 
So the next thing I want to do is I want to project this board onto the tailboard. So if I slide that back and now I move the tailboard in place so that I would be able to do this projection, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pencil on this surface and I'm going to draw what that angle is when it's projected onto this inclined tailboard. So let me go ahead and do that. So let me use this extra gauge to steal this angle. Now, if we take a look at these two gauges, it's not that one. We already knew that. But this is the one that we would have expected that we could have just transferred over. And again, we're going to be able to see that there's a discrepancy. There's a small blank in there. Now, the more these boards open up, the larger that mistake is going to be. Now, if you transfer that and you think, well, that's kind of really small, not a big deal. Of course, when you're doing some cutting, you may assemble it and there's going to be a small error. It's going to compound its way all the way around. And if you were to just simply cut these things blind, when you got to the end, they may not match up very well. So you really do need to do some projections like this when you're doing a compound angle. So now let me use this gauge to go ahead and mark these lines. So we can see what the discrepancy is a little bit easier now because I can place this bevel gauge. This is the angle that we would have expected we could just transfer over, but we can't. This is the line that was actually projected by the pencil. So you can see that there's a discrepancy down here at the bottom. Switching to the pin board, there's an equal discrepancy there. If I line this up on the line up here, you can see that there's a little bit of the white down below showing that it's off the line. So let me go cut these boards and we'll assemble this. So now with our pin and tail boards cut on the miter angle, we can draw the tails the way we want them to appear on this outside. None of the other stuff is into play yet. So let me go ahead and draw those in. And the same considerations would be for this joint as they would be for the one where just the tail board was inclined in that you might prefer to make the tails a little bit wider. So those are going to be our tails. Now we need to determine the rest of the cuts for these tails. Now that's going to be horizontal to this surface. Now regardless of the fact that this is inclined or not, we can take this bevel gauge and we can rotate it to create the horizontal lines that are here. So let me go ahead and do that. So this is still the same as with the other joints that involve the bevel gauge. Now with those cut lines, I can fully cut these tails. So let me go ahead and do that. So now with the tailboard fully cut, we can orient this correctly, and I can take the marking knife to strike the lines so that I know exactly where the pins are located. This is sounding very repetitious. Now so far everything has been kind of as planned the way we did all the other joints with only one exception and that being instead of taking the one bevel gauge and writing it to get the miter cut of the other board I was using a pencil to do the projection because the angle is subtly different. So that's one change. There's only one other difference that we have when we're doing a joint where both boards are inclined. Now up till now to get the horizontal cut that we had over here it was really easy. We just took this bevel gauge and we flipped it around and there was our horizontal line. When we go to the pin board, we can't do that. Now, the reason being is that here we're writing it on the end grain. On this one here, we're going to be writing the horizontal line on the face of the board. That actually makes a difference because of the reference that you're in. Uh, rather than talk about perpendicular planes and all that good stuff, just remember the rule. So how are we going to get a horizontal line on there if I can't take this bevel gauge and flip it around or I can't do it with something else? How am I going to get that? An easy way is to simply take something like in my case I have this double square. I'm just going to put it up here against that board. Now this double square is, this is now parallel to the bottom surface. So I can take a pencil and I can just draw a line. It has nothing to do with where one of the pin cuts is going to be. I just want to draw a line. So now with that line, I can take my third bevel gauge that I've been using for sort of temporary transfers, and I can put it on this board right on this angle here, right on the edge, the, on the miter cut, and I can adjust it to match the line that I just drew. Now I can draw all the horizontal lines I want by just scooting up and down this board. So let me go ahead and do that to draw these pin lines. And now I've got my horizontal cut lines 
for the pins. And we'll notice that this bevel angle that we just finished determining does not match what we had for the pinboard inclination, nor does it match what's on the tailboard inclination. In the case of the tailboard inclination, it's really close, partly because the pinboard is only slightly inclined. So now let me cut my pinboard. And the joint goes together. You can see it's standing nicely, doesn't rock a lot. So let's see how we did on our angles. Here's our pin board. There's a small gap at the top, and we're going to talk about that. It's actually expected. And then here's our tail board. That pretty much is dead on. Now, why is this one here? Why does it have the small error? Normally, when you would be preparing this stock for making drawers or a box or whatever, when it's inclined like that, you know that this board would be inclined at this angle, so you would bevel rip the top and the bottom so that basically it would look like a parallelogram on the side. You would do the same with this. Then after you assembled this joint, this entire bottom would be flat. If you were to take a look down here, which you won't be able to see on the camera, so to make it easier to see, here's a post-it. Very easily slide underneath. There's actually a fairly good gap underneath there. If I were to lift this side here up so that that gap is even, now that's the same. So if the bottom was all flat when you, did the, when you did the bevel rips, you'd be just fine for this board. So if you're trying this out and, and then you get this little gap, you're like, oh, I must have cut it incorrectly or I did something wrong with the angles. No, make sure you check this because it could happen on the tail board or the pin board. So to me, this one came out just fine. Now to show a little bit of how that has a discrepancy on there, you can see light coming right through there. That's because this edge here is not flush with this one here as it would be if it was a regular bevel cut. So after doing a messy pile of these dovetail joints, both the model joints and then the ones that we did together here, you can see that while there are some complications in the final compound procedure, the one thing that you have to remember is how to determine the horizontal on the pin board and also that you have to project using the pencil. All the other ones were very much, you know, nothing is too surprising there. You're just using the bevel gauge to determine the horizontal. So as long as you plan on laying out what will be visible on the surface and then where the cut will go, if you break that up into steps, you'll find that this is actually pretty easy to do. So now for me, I have three drawers to do that are going to include two each of this type of joint, the compound joint, and then two each of this tail incline joint. This one here would be the one that's in the back of the drawer. So I'm going to have some fun trying to remember how all this works.